module of thousands of times and get some answer. If you get one, it is a quadratic reason. If you get minus one, it's not a quadratic reason. And we know that we can actually perform such computations. It won't take us too long using the Celsius equation within. This kind of long computation is not extremely long. So at least we can solve such problems in a reasonable amount of time. But what about such a problem? So a new kind of problem. Suppose I want to ask a kind of corner question. I want to know all the primes P for which 2 is a quadratic reason. So for each. Thirds, that's a question. For which prime p, now this congruence have at least one solution. In other words, which primes can appear as, as a divisor of x squared plus 1 of some x? Another problem is a question. And the answer is like this. 
this question is equivalent to asking whether minus 1 is a quadratic residue, whether it is a quadratic residue is governed by the result of such contribution, minus 1 to power d minus 1 divided by 2. If it is equal to 1, it is a quadratic residue. If it's minus 1, it's not a quadratic residue. And this number is equal to 1 if and only if 4 is divisor of d minus 1. Answer or So we would we would like to get some kind of answer for questions like this. When is say three a quadratic residue module of prime P? So we would want we have a way to compute something like this, three under symbol three over p. <coughs> well, what is? We have a procedure for how to compute it. Something like a three raised to the huge power of p minus one divided by two module p, and see whether it's one minus one. But it's not really a formula that you can just see. Well, if p is six k plus one, then it's one. If, 6, if p is six k minus one, it's minus one. It's not for this kind. But today we are going to get exactly such formula that this genre symbol is computable in very, very simple way. So let me start. Let me just formulate the theorem and then we'll start proving it. Here. Suppose you want to compute the genre symbol of A over P. You want to decide whether A is a quadratic rate. Answer. You don't have to compute anything modulo P. You have just to compute the following thing. Take minus 1 and raise it to the following power. The integer part of twice A divided by P plus integer part of 4A divided by P plus and so on plus and you go all the way until you get the d minus 1 a divided by b so here you have d oh, minus 1 divided by 2 summits oh. and the series has an assumption e e is when p is equal to 2, it's not an interesting question. Basically, because 0 is a square, 1 is a square, modulo 2. So, we are not going to talk about p equal to 2 in this lecture. But for any odd number p, we have a complete answer. Compute this integer. So, first of all, let me recall what this notation means. So, mark, recall. This is called the integer part of x. It's integer part of x. So if you have a real number, you can find what is the largest integer, which is still smaller than this number. So for instance, integer part of 5 is the same as integer part of 5.2, the same as integer part of 5.99 is equal to 5. So given a real number, you can just disregard everything which comes after the dot. Okay, and here's an answer. To verify whether A is a quadratic residue modulo the prime number P, compute the following sum. Take 2 times A divided by P. Disregard the, the non-integer part. Remember this number. Take 4 times a divided by p. Once again, this is regarded the non-integer part. Compute p minus 1 over 2 such sums. Take the sum. If the sum is even, this is a square. If the sum is odd, it's not a square. So, very simple answer, kind of a direct formula. What you should actually compute to verify whether it is, it is a square or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, P is, P is odd, 
prime, the only divisible of prime matrix. So P is not an odd prime, it's just two. So yes. So we are dealing with the question of when something is square modular prime number because <coughs> If, if you want to understand whether something is a square module of P times Q, you understand whether it's a square module of P, whether it's a square module of Q, and then the genus remainder theorem will be a square of module of P times Q, the P and Q distinction. So basically, the interesting part of the question is when P is prime. Okay, so let me. Here I have 
these numbers. I can try to so suppose here I have p minus 1 times t, so some number times t. So it is some number, I can reduce it modulo p. So this number could be bigger than p, but then I can subtract a couple of multiples of p and get a number which is smaller. Well, let me not even stop here. I will subtract a couple of multiples that will bring this number to the number between 0 and p minus 1. And then if I get an even number, I stop. If I get an odd number, I will subtract one extra one. And now I will get, well, instead of x, so the trick is like this. I will take each number in this product and subtract a multiple of p from this number in such a way that I will get an even number between minus p and minus p and p. So I will get 2 times 4 times and so on times p minus 1. I'll get once again all the different numbers between 0 and p, but maybe some of them will come with minus signs. So once again here, so if it will come with minus 1 to some power, we'll decide in a second what power it is. But once again, the procedure here is as follows. Replace each number of the form of k times a. So here I have lots of such numbers. By a corresponding number between minus p and p, which is even. By corresponding number. Why can I do it? Well, I can always subtract a multiple of p to get a number between 0 and p minus 1. That's just reduction modulo p. If I get an even number, I stop there. If I get an odd number, I subtract another multiple of p. And then I get a negative number, which is now even. So the question is, how many times did I have to perform this step? to subtract, well, how many times I abated this minus sign? How many times after reducing modulo p, in the usual way, I got an odd number as, a, as my answer? Well, let's compute. What happens if you try to take such number to k times a and reduce modulo p? You subtract the multiple of p, which is, well, this number. So when we make this replacement, what we do is by subtracting oh, oh, when we sub <coughs> sorry. When we subtract what multiple of p are we subtracting each other? At each step we are subtracting such a multiple. Times can be subtract p exactly this number of times. 
and divide this number into t and see how many times p fits into this number. So if we subtract an even number of multiples of p, then we stop here. So we are not changing the sign. If we are subtracting an odd number of multiples of p, well, we will not stop here. And then we will have to introduce a sign. So that's the same thing like this. Each time I'm subtracting some number which is, I don't know, even, I will multiply by, by sign plus 1. It's minus 1 to the power of this even number. Each time I am so each time I will, I will I am performing this procedure with some of these numbers, the sign that will appear here will be as follows. It will be plus one. If the multiple I'm subtracting is even, it will be minus one if the multiple I'm subtracting is odd. So that's one of the ways to, to write it down. If this, if this multiple is even, it's a plus sign. If this multiple is odd, it's a minus sign. Well, so once again, this holds modular P. And now just compare these two formulas. In these two formulas, in one of them, this product is multiplied by the Alexander symbol. In the other one, it is multiplied by this, this sign. So the Alexander symbol should be equal to this sign. So, uh, over P. Over P, yes. Was over P. Try to see what happened, say, in the case of computing 3 modulo 7. Okay, so the conclusion is hence a modulo 3 is equal to minus 1 to this power, to the a modulo 3, and so on plus 2 minus 1 to the power. <coughs> Let's first see one example how this proof actually works. So let's <coughs> say once again example. Let's see how how this proof computes once again the gender symbol of three modulo seven. So what we do is as follows. We take all the even numbers modulo 7. It's 2 times 4 times 6. So this product itself doesn't really interest us. What interests us is the following. We multiply each of these even numbers by 3. So it's 2 times 3 times 2 times 4 times Six. So, on the one hand side, it is the same as the following thing. It is 2 times 4 times 6 times 3 cube. <coughs> 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 2 times 3 times 4 times 3 and 6 times 3. So once again, in this product we just multiply each of the elements, each of the factors by 3. And then this product got, got multiplied by 3 cube. And 3 cube is the number that we are interested in. It's either plus 1 or minus 1 according to whether 3 is a, is a quadratic crazy or not. And now, in another way, we are computing it as follows. We take 2 times 3 and we reduce it to modulo 7. 
coming back to the subject seven from it will zero times. So this just six with no sign. We subtracted zero times. Here, so maybe I let me do it like this. I introduced no sign times six. Then I'm reducing twelve modulo seven. Well, if I just reduce it, I get five. But I don't want to get five. I will move. So, sorry. Twelve modulo seven. Yes. So twelve modulo seven is five, but I didn't want to, to get five. I wanted to get something even. So I'll subtract another multiple of seven. And then I'll get negative two. So I get two, but I introduce a minus sign, which accounts for the fact that to get five out of twelve, I subtracted an odd number of multiples of p. So it's minus one, and I subtracted exactly one multiple of p. And finally, to get from 18 to its residue modulo 7, what should I do? I should subtract 2 times 7. And then I, I get to the number 4, which is 18 modulo 7, but I subtracted 2 multiples of 7. And then I get, well, I get the same product, 2 times 4 times 6, in different order. The permutation of the even numbers. And the new sign that I get is like this minus 1 to the power of how many times I subtracted p here, how many times I subtracted p here, how many times I subtracted p here. So here I get this equality. And this all works modulo 7. So it's a kind of, well, a kind of trick. It is a very, very clever trick, and uh, I think not even Gauss found it. Gauss had a little bit more complicated proof. I think Eisenstein later found such a trick. But then, yeah. How do you know that uh, the one, the multiplication after negative one to the power one may not be exactly as well, just as the order? Thanks. So, why? Why these given numbers should be should be reordering of the two Yes. So what happens is, is I'm just taking well, I know that after I'm doing this procedure I'm getting either plus either positive even number or negative number. Yeah, even number. Yeah. But now I should get, get different numbers because they well how do I get? I get them as reductions of those numbers module P. Yeah. And those numbers are different. Yeah. So since these numbers are different, I will, I will be getting P minus 1 divided by 2 different even numbers. So they must be just some permutation of the original ones. Okay. Okay. So yes. So we got this formula, but it's kind of, well, actually it's kind of confusing. The reason is, well, it has lots of summons, kind of hard to remember what it is. I mean, it's nice, it's very easy to work with, but still, kind of confusing. Let me just reformulate this. So, in 
Inside of this triangle, so this point has coordinates P and A. Inside of this triangle, I will count the number of points with even x coordinates. So this point, this point, maybe this point, somewhere here it will be T minus 1 is even. So let N be the number of points. Under symbol a over p is exactly equal to minus 1 to the power n. So now I've got the formula for the Legendre symbol, which isn't really a formula, it's a picture. Here's the picture, I mean, it's most convenient to have kind of. Well, we have paper which is not just true, but true in two different directions. So if you just take such triangle and you count the number of vertices which fall inside. Well, not all vertices, only those with the different <coughs> x coordinates. That's the rule. So you count them. If you get an even number, then a modulo p is a square. If you get an odd number, it's not a square. part of this thing. So 
this sum just has a different interpretation. It is just a number of integer points in this picture. And then the other part, which is, so this part is kind of trivial. You just count how many integer points are there. The other part that this sum is, if you take minus one and raise it to the power of this sum, that you get the Rishander symbol, well, that's not trivial. We kind of struggled a little bit to prove it, but, well, we did. So now we can just use it. maybe interpret this answer even more completely. So if E is a form 4K plus 1, then 2 over P is under single is as follows. It's minus 1 raised. If you divide this number by 2, you get 2 times K. If you divide this number by 4, you get k. So it is minus 1 to the power k. It's equal to 1 if and only if k is even. So if p e is of the form 4k minus 1, then 2 over p is like this. If you take this number and divide it by 2, you get 2k okay, minus 1. That's how many times 2 fits, in, fits into this number. And if you divide it by 4, you get k okay, minus 1. So 
what is it? It's minus 1 to the power of 2k minus 2 always 1. So it is minus 1 to the power of k. So we get the following result. The Legendre symbol of 2 over t is plus 1. If and only if t is of the following form, it's 4k plus 1, this k is even, so it's 8k plus 1, or 4k minus 1, this k is even, so it's 8k plus or minus 1. And it's minus 1 in the other cases, if p is 8k plus or minus 3. So we got a complete answer. 2 is a quadratic residue modulo prime p if and only if p is of the form 8k plus <coughs> 1. That's it, complete answer. Anyway, if this is latently correct, then this is latently correct. Somewhere in between, there might be a mistake. <laughs> okay, so let's have a break and we'll discuss other cases here. <laughs> 